I wanted to take a moment to take a quick look at the shanks and hammers of the 33B. Um, they are in a lot of ways, as I've said before, just a basic standard flange, shank, hammer system. Back check on it. But other than that, they're quite different from anything you'd find in a modern piano. And I just wanted to go through the, uh, the points quickly. Um, the hammer isn't so different from a modern one. It's a lot smaller in bulk. The body here is probably only ooh, seven, maybe eight millimeters instead of nine or ten. And everything's just a little bit smaller. Um, and the hammer itself is much, much softer by unbelievable amounts. Um, this is, I hope that Ronson with bacon felts will be this soft. That's how soft this is. Anyway, um, other than the hammer being a little different, it's a hammer. The shank is a little primitive in that the shank is a dowel that is then set into a piece of wood. As I said, this is where it has something in common with a lot of square grands. A modern grand piano, this would just be made out of one piece of wood. And it has, as I said before, a flat driving surface. And the flat driving surface on this is a square piece of wood that has been inset to the underside of this. And then, hopefully the camera can catch it, but it's been machined off at an angle. And this then creates the driving surface that the under hammer pushes on. There's the... You can see right there, maybe the light bounces off it just right. You can see the spot where the felt has polished the maple. And it is definitely a Model T style or Model T level technology. But they were popular for 60 years. And I think they'll be. Uh, this will be a nice playing piano. And there's one detail in this while taking it apart that I found that surprised me, but didn't surprise me because I found it in chickerings of much later date. And I'm not sure if this is going to come out or not at all. But the sides of this wooden piece are dead flat. And so are the sides of the flange. If I can just get this to angle just right, what hopefully you'll be able to see is that the bushing itself from inside the flange actually extends slightly from the surface and when this part's put in that bit of felt suspends this so that they don't longer they don't rub they act as bird's eyes and flange out to create what I think is probably a very very low friction system and I found they used this up into the 1890s, even in their brass flange systems. So it's a chickering signature technique.